Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. It's Thursday, the 28th of January, 2021. Um, today we're in James chapter 3, continuing on the end of the chapter with the discussion of two kinds of wisdom. James wants to talk to us about two kinds of wisdom. The wisdom that comes from God and the wisdom which is rooted in sin. So James speaks, starting in verse 13, saying this. He says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. So wisdom is not just head knowledge. In actuality, true wisdom is knowledge which shows itself through good actions done in meekness. And meekness is not weakness. It's just it's a reverent approach. Um, and a humble approach to life. Um, those who try to draw attention to themselves when they do good are not in actuality displaying true wisdom. James defines what this means to have a true quality of wisdom in verses 17 and 18 of James 3 when he says, But wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and, in, and sincere. You see, the qualities of heavenly wisdom are, are beautiful. Uh, the true wisdom of heaven is filled with love towards others, compassion, and having a giving heart um, in, in how we approach other people. It always manifests itself in a way that is consistent with the holiness of God. So it's pure. It's interesting how James describes these two uh, kinds of wisdom, just like he described two kinds of faith in the prior lessons we had in, in James here. He describes uh, faith as having a godly um, type of faith and a demonic type of faith. And now here he's describing a godly type of wisdom versus a demonic type of wisdom. So, um, the wisdom of heaven is never brash, condescending, or self-seeking. And it's compared with the other kind of wisdom from the sinful human heart, the systems of this world that are under the influence of, of sin and rebellion against God is sin and also the devil and his kingdom. Um, so James speaks to this in verses 14 to 16, where he, he contrasts this heavenly, pure, wonderful, loving wisdom with unspiritual wisdom, saying, But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For you, where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. As is in the case in other places in, in the scriptures, James defines the root of corruption as selfishness in stark contrast to the fruit of of the Spirit, uh, which is the fruit of heaven's wisdom, which in actuality, if you boil it all down, is selflessness. So the w wisdom of this world and corruption is selfishness, and the wisdom of the world and the unspiritual wisdom is selfishness. And it doesn't make sense for people to be... Um, extraordinarily generous. You need to serve your own interests in this world because no one else is going to serve you. So you might as well serve yourself. So that's the kind of worldly wisdom. God helps those who help themselves. It reminds me of a movie, actually, that I once watched called First Night. Now, it's not the best movie in all regards, but one thing 
that really stands out is there's this kingdom of Camelot and the king of this wonderful, harmonious, beautiful kingdom that where everyone's working in harmony. His name is uh, King Arthur. And he had a round table where everybody would contribute to the to the the way that the community was run. Arthur invited uh, other knights to this round table, and their their wisdom would be pooled to make things run better. But he had this one knight that went bad, and and that knight, his name was Prince Malagant, and uh, he was once seated with the other knights, but he rebelled because he wanted Camelot for himself, so he, he became selfish. And uh, after he had gone out and he had gained um, support from a, new, a number of people in his army, he ended up invading Camelot. And he came in and he, he looks at Arthur and he says, Look at him. Look at the great King Arthur of Camelot. He's a man waking up to a dream, from a dream. The strong rule the weak, he said. That's how your God made this world. My God makes me strong so that I can live my life. That's what Mal Malahant said, Malagant said. But King Arthur, he said, in contrast to this, God makes us strong only for a while so that we can help each other. You see, this movie underpins the great battle raging in this world it's always been a battle of opposing ideologies. Oftentimes, these great battles of ideologies uh, between good and evil in books uh, play out in movies because when we watch those things, we're gripped. We actually sense the struggle that's uh, within them as something in real life. These two types of wisdom are always vying for control. On one hand, there is darkened, self-seeking, self-centered, worldly, and demonic wisdom, which actually in the end leads to disorder, and wickedness. And on the other hand, you have this enlightened, peaceful, other-centered, heavenly wisdom that has its source in God, which leads to harmony and goodness. And the Bible tells us in the scriptures about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Um, and he tells us about the final outcomes, right? Uh, that God's kingdom of light, in the end, will triumph over the wisdom of this world and the darkness of the enemy. And this is why James here most confidently says in verse 18, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And that is why when all is said and done, at the end of the age, in the finality of God's dealings with the subjects on earth, Revelation 11.15 says, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet. And there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit on the thrones before God fell down on their faces and worshipped God. You see, we have this struggle between the two kinds of wisdom. But God says, that his wisdom in the end shall prevail. The Lord is God, and he has created things in a certain way, and he's allowed the darkness of the enemy and his wisdom to provide an alternative to his pure heavenly wisdom. But at the end of the age, God will call an end to it all, and his wisdom will prevail. I pray that we would seek God and would ask Him to fill us with His purity, with His wisdom, because it is everlasting.
This is food for thought.